Eric, um, you bought three birds today uh, on exhibition, and the purpose of the birds today is just to show people uh, your particular type of pigeon uh, and style of pigeon. Now, Eric, uh, these particular pigeons which you've got on exhibition today, I see that they fled uh, 20 hours 2 minutes and also 20 hours 20 minutes, which I believe has never been done before in one year. Um, can you tell us something about the pigeons uh, and why and how you think that you've achieved this? Now, obviously, Eric, you've only been flying tipplers recently in the last couple of years. You've really, I know you've had pigeons before, but you've just, over the last two years, uh, been flying competition in the NTU. You're a member of the Dudley Club, yeah. and obviously you've won quite a bit this year in the Dudley Club. Can you tell us something, Eric, how you think you've achieved the fantastic achievement you've done with these particular pigeons. Why do you think that these particular pigeons, and how have you trained them, how have you fed them, would you say that's got a lot to do with it? Yeah. What well, I would make. Well, when the bowling breeze and the pigeons are flying, they'll do the time anyway, the cells, they'll do good time. But, as you know yourself, you've got to put a lot of time into them training them. Yeah. And, uh, Would you say then the training has got a lot to do with training getting actually. the performance out well, of a bird? You only get out what you put in, don't you? You only get out what you put in. And obviously, with these particular, would you say these See, particular type of breed is, is well, not fit for this type of thing? Well, on the day, it's getting the day right, obviously. And you've got to get your pigeons fit. I mean, I've got them fit. I just had a bit of luck on the day, mate. Yeah, just had a bit of luck on the day. Well, it seems to me a bit more than luck when you fly 20 hours twice in one year. Uh, that seems to me a bit more than luck to me. Um, what, what would you say about the training then? How many hours training did you give these pigeons? Well, uh, the training days, they do about six or seven hours. But obviously, would That's that be just one day, or, or would you give them six or seven hours, two or three days two a week? Two or three days a week, right, six or seven hours, right. But it, if a pigeon's well, you're taking to say, you're going to get him, you know, you're taking to say, he's only going to do six or seven hours. He would do more, would you say? Well, if a pigeon's right, he won't come till he's ready. Yeah. Obviously, you keep him down. To control know, them? To control them, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, well, what type of feed would you feed these type of pigeons? To get them in the condition? And perhaps the well, times that you've done. You don't give them the protein, eh? Yeah, the seeds. You give them plenty of seeds? Well, I feed them on only corn in training. Do you need training? Them. What right. sort of corn is that, Harry? Well, purative. Yeah? I feed them the purative on training, just to control them, you know, and obviously. And when, when you say to control them, that's to stop them flying longer yeah. than what they should fly? Well, there's no way you can control them. If you got them too well. If you got them too well. So, as you know, you see, Nick, you got to give them some some rough stuff, as I say, like to control. Just to them. keep them off and, uh, too long. On the build-up, you got to give them. Yeah. A now, what, what do you say on the build-up? Yeah. To build them, keep it like you build them up that. What sort of corn would, or seed would you give them, and how often would you give it to them? Well, I feed them conditioner. Yeah. The build-up. You feed them conditioner. Conditioner. If you think it's going to be odd day, nice, not early on the season, it's bad weather, yeah. so you've got to give them a bit of large stuff. So what you do in the early fall, you would feed them a little bit heavier than what you would when the summer comes around. Right, yeah. Don't forget, these pigeons, they fled every competition. So you I've fled these, every competition, all the old birds, everyone, and early on in the season, I had to feed them heavier. But as the weather got better, I fed them lighter, conditioning seeds. Is that what, Why did you do that, Rick? Because of the weather. Because I mean, obviously in the, in the winter they need more for their body, and in the summer they don't need so much right, because of the yeah. weather. Would you say that's mainly because of the weather? Yeah. Well, the weather has a lot to do with it. Oh, yeah. Uh, with us in the later flies, like July, towards long day. I mean, the weather's red hot. Yeah. The pigeon might want to be fed every then. No. He'd be fed lighter. And if you did feed the pigeon every then, what, 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 what would he want to the time, wouldn't he? And what would, what would, when you say he wouldn't at the time, what would happen to the pigeon, Eric? Well, 
Well, he would more than likely uh, be he sick or, the time. Well, or drop and be sick and then fly again. Well, if he's all, you can overfeed him, as you know yourself. I mean, if he was overfed, he'd probably fly about an hour and drop away. And that's and, because of overfeeding. And spew up and then fly, probably strike up again and fly all day. Yeah. But it, it's now in the pigeon so and we to if, feed him on what the What you're day. saying then, if a pigeon hasn't digested his food, that's right. then obviously the pigeon is not in proper well, condition. He wouldn't fly the time that he, he, he should fly. No, no. Well, as, you, as I said, Mick, you want to get out what you put in. And obviously, if you've got a, a kit of pigeons fit, and you'll get to know them, because you're down that pen all the time, you'll know exactly how much to give that pigeon and what elite. So you've really got to put a lot of You've time got it, in. Mick, that's it. See, it's all right for the pigeons on a summer's day, a nice summer's day, but the guys don't see what? the dark nights when you're frosted it down the garden in the dark when it's raining and all that. Yeah. What? And you're training your pigeon. Well, and what sort of times have you, like, would you say, I think, is, is uh, for that, especially for that type of pigeon and that kit of pigeon you've got there? What type of hours do you allow it to fly in the dark? Well, them, they've fled four to five hours in the dark. Into the dark. They surprised me. They surprised me, I don't know about you. <laughs> but, like, I've never missed them pigeons. You've never missed I've them? I've never missed them pigeons. And what, what would you do if you'd miss one of them? Would you fly them again? No. Why, no. why wouldn't you fly well, them again? You're gonna, if you miss a pigeon... If you miss a pigeon... Right. You're going to miss them again, Mick. Not necessarily, but it's in the back of your mind. If you fly, if you've missed a pigeon and you fly them again in competition, you've got your two birds on the pin, and the one you've missed is still flying. You can, you can gamble, you won't get him. You'll be very lucky but to get him. You may get him, and you may. but you're taking a chance there, really. No, the best flying pigeon that you aim is in a competition. What every guy does his own thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But obviously, what we what we're looking if for now. If you ain't got the pigeons, you've got to fly them. Yeah. But obviously, what we're looking for now, Rick, you've achieved this feat. You see, and other people would like to know how you've done it, and, and well, obviously, this is why you like being interviewed. On the on the competition, I've had two competitions. Well, I've had every competition in MBS. But the particular time, I broke two records, right? Yeah. Nick. I want to broke them records. I've done a good time, but I want to broke them records. It's got to be for Jim McDonald. Yeah. Well, why would you say that then, Eric? Um, well, as you know yourself, Mick, on competition, and you, you fly 19 hours plus, I mean, that is a good time. Yeah. Now, them pigeons had done that, and they were still going. And Jim McDonald come down the garden, because I was satisfied with 19 hours. And 19 you would have dropped them? About 19 and a half hours, I'm ready to run down the pen. Yeah. Well, it was a few guys, a few pigeon flyers around the, On that around the garden that night. It was about a dozen, as it happens. And Jim McDonald, experienced flyer like yourself, Mick, he went, let him go, Eric. See? And uh, I just had a bit of luck. And uh, otherwise, I shouldn't have broke a record that night. Well, I didn't break a record. I, you know, I didn't put a good time to them. Yeah. But if, Someone had to be there to assure me. An edge you're on, like, yeah. Obviously, right. you know, you've only been a couple of years flying and. He got recently. the experience. Yeah. And he could see you, you, he, that the yeah. pigeons still had a lot left in them, yeah. and he coached you to let them go on. Oh, that's right. And you did, and you achieved yeah. it. Would you, say, would you say you've got a sort of um, uh, be a bit daring and push well, you along? It depends what the guy <laughs> wants out of his pigeons. I mean, myself, they've done enough on the day. Yeah, you thought they'd done enough. So, well, so with Jimmy being there, he just he encouraged me to let him go a bit longer. But I knew, it done what time I could, I knew I was going, I knew I wasn't going to miss him. Mm -hmm. I never missed him because you've never missed him before. I knew I was going to go. Mm -hmm. Well, well, done, Eric. It's a fantastic achievement, right, that is. And oh, by the that. way, I had him off you, Mick. You never had him off me. Thank you very much.